Hey guys, so I know I've been MIA for a while, which does tend to happen because I get pretty dang busy over here, but um, I just moved to a new spot again. I'm still in Los Angeles, but I wanted to make a quick video for you guys. Um, it's not a restoration video, but I feel like it's important to show you ways that I use my multimeter when repairing vintage amps. So the multimeter I use is this Fluke 114. Um, it was gifted to me by my mentor, Mike Del Valley, um, years and years ago, and I still use it. But there are cheaper multimeters you can use that have the same functions, and there are more expensive multimeters you can use that have more functions. But I've found that this pretty much has everything I need, and I'm going to go over all of the features that I use. All right, so here's an up-close look at the multimeter. So I'm going to start by explaining what these are. So these are where you plug in your test leads, and it's pretty straightforward. The common is basically where you ground the multimeter when you need to make certain readings. So the black lead plugs into there, and then the positive lead plugs into the red. The features that I use mostly are AC voltage, DC voltage. This measures millivolts, which I don't really use very often, um, but this can measure both AC or DC millivolts. And right now it's on AC, and if you click this button right here, it switches to DC. So you can make different readings that way. Another one that I use a lot is to measure ohms. So you use this to measure resistors. And then I also use this continuity feature, which basically lets you test whether two points are connected. And if they are connected, it'll make a beeping sound like that. Um, another thing that's kind of handy is the backlight feature. Otherwise, that's pretty much everything I use. I'm gonna give you some examples of how I use the multimeter when testing amps. So there are some different kinds of test probes you can use with your multimeter. These are very common probes. Um, I had one that broke and I substituted in with this one that actually hooks on to the chassis. And this actually comes in handy when I'm measuring voltages because I can just hook this to the chassis as my ground point and measure voltages hands-free like that. So kind of cool. Basically, I'm going to give you some examples of how I use this in this 1961 Fender concert amp. So I'm going to turn on the power. When you're measuring voltage in general, you clip the ground lead or secure the ground lead to ground, and you really only want to be probing with one hand, so that's where this comes in handy. So in this amp, there are a few different points where I would be measuring AC voltage. One of them is the 120 volts that comes from the wall. And you can see right there, I'm getting 121.3 volts AC, and that's on the, directly on the, the fuse. So the fuse is getting that 120. Another point where I measure AC voltage in an amp is the lower filament voltage, um, and that powers the pilot light as well as all the tube filaments. So you can see here we're getting AC voltage on the pilot light. There's also AC that comes out of the power transformer once the voltage is stepped up. So that's going to be a high AC voltage. Here we have 385 volts AC. And then we can switch to DC voltage where we can measure for example, the high voltage after it's been rectified to DC voltage. So there we have 533 volts DC. There are other points in the amp where there is DC voltage. The cathodes of the preamp tubes have low DC voltage, 1.6 volts. Um, the preamp tube plates also have um, DC voltage, but it is a little bit higher voltage. So we're seeing 223.5 volts there. So those are some examples of where I'd be measuring DC voltage in an amp. All right, so like I said, I don't really use the millivolt reading very often, 
So we're going to go down to ohms. And when you're measuring ohms, it's very important to turn off the amp all the way. You don't want to be measuring voltage while you're on the ohm setting. That can make things all screwy. So sometimes you're able to measure a resistor in circuit. For example, I'll measure this 4.7K resistor in circuit. And it's written 5.1K. It's a pretty old resistor, so it's not necessarily spot on, but that's an example of being able to read a resistor in circuit. Sometimes there's examples where you have to lift up one end of the resistor lead um, because some of the other components in line with the resistor are causing the reading to be inaccurate for that one component because they're all affecting the total resistance. So let's see here, this 470K ohm resistor for example, is reading 280K. All right, so I'm going to lift one end of this resistor. So now it's out of circuit. And let's see what reading we get. There we go, 474K. So that is the measurement of that resistor. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to measure continuity. So again, when two things are connected and you're measuring it, it'll make a beep and sound like that. So I use this a lot to find ground points. So I clip one end to ground and then I can go through and see what's connected to ground. There's a lot of points where the wires are connected underneath the board. For example, right here, you can't really see exactly where these wires are going to. So that's where the continuity checker comes in handy. We can put one lead onto one end of the wire and then kind of figure out where it's connected by doing that. Not connected there, connected there. So that's just an example of how I use continuity when I'm doing repair work. All right, so that pretty much concludes all of the ways that I use my multimeter to service vintage amps. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and thanks for tuning in.